Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you are watching this video. My name is Tim Belfield, and I am the primary principal here at LIS. And I welcome you to the EY3 to Grade 1 information evening. It's not really an evening, is it? Um, but sadly, I was not very well on Tuesday the 6th, so I hope this video goes some way to making up for that and gives you all the information you need to know about Grade 1 and our primary school. So welcome. We are filled with a range of nationalities and a range of languages in our primary and hopefully I have in front of you um, your home language. So welcome to our primary. These are the things we're going to cover in today's video from the most important information source to what we traditionally do here, ending with a final thought. So let's move on. The most important information source. This is available to you right now, and it's this. It's the Primary School Parent Handbook. You can access it already via our school website. If you click on primary section, you should see a little picture of me and some a welcome information. And in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you might have to scroll down a little bit, you should see a link to this handbook. So today's video is going to try and avoid repeating anything you can see in here. There are a few things I'm gonna expand on, but this is the most info important information source. It's big, it's very big. If memory serves me correctly, it's about 77 pages. But to make it easier, if you are brand new to the school, there are items with three stars next to them. Have a look at those and that should hopefully give you some really good starting information. But this handbook is vital and it gets regularly updated. Now, normally in this presentation, I'd ask if you've got any questions about moving to the primary school. Why? Well, I help. I, I like involvement in presentations. Uh, it's much nicer actually doing face-to-face -face than doing a video like this because it helps shape the presentation. So clearly that's not going to happen today, but what I would like you to do is to think, why are you considering grade one in primary here? Maybe your children or you've got some other children that have gone through the school already and hopefully they've enjoyed their time here. Whatever your reasoning for considering grade one in our primary school, I hope that this video will answer your questions. Uh, if not, if you've got any other questions, please feel free to email me. I'll share my email later on in this presentation. EY3, grade one. There are lots of similarities and a few differences. So we're gonna look at them now for both you and your child. The similarities begin with our philosophy. It's all about the child. It is all about the child. In our first three weeks of this year, and we did the same for the past two years, we spent time building relationships, getting to know the students and letting them get to know us. We wore our name tags every day for three weeks. So children feel more at home, more comfortable, and this year's grade one already knew a lot of the grade fours because they'd been buddies with them when they were back in EY3. So there are lots of um, knowing your child. We also have the IPC, the Cambridge International Primary Curriculum. Clearly English is the language of instruction. Um, everybody in the primary school speaks very good English. And we also have people of multinationalities who can support those children who are struggling at times in a whole variety of other languages. We clearly have a stimulating learning environment. We love, love to use what Leipzig has to offer, including Clara Zetkin Park, who's we back onto. A wonderful resource. It was great during the post-corona lockdown for going for walks and looking at the environment. 
we have the school garden. Um, it's a great place to be. Lots of group settings in grade one, they do group stations, workstations and everything. And there are gonna be some staff that you will recognize, I hope. And assemblies as well, although our assemblies are a little bit different in primary, um, we have all of the children and all of the staff together, usually on a Friday morning. Parents at the moment due to Corona, we don't have an open door for that, but when we get back to normal, you are more than welcome to attend any of our assemblies. Clearly though, there are gonna be some differences. There are some new faces, it's a different site. So new routines, especially getting ready for lunch. Um, there is a bit more emphasis on academics. We have maths, dedicated maths, English, IPC lessons, library lessons, uh, music, PE, and of course the assembly. We have something called the golden rule that links in with our positive behavior policy. More on that in a minute. We have our hort, again, some more information soon. And something that we do every year without fail is we mix all the classes and that will start in EY3. There are, I, I fully appreciate that there are some people who um, have explanations or reasons why that we shouldn't. In my experience, and I've been doing this job for a long time, uh, we find it very, very beneficial. It builds in a lot of character and qualities and helps build up these friendship groups. Uh, so that is something that we do in EY3, grades one, two, three, four, five, and in preparation for grade six. More on that in a bit though. For you as parents, um, we continue with the open door policy. Uh, we have a very active room parent group. Uh, it's great work that they've been doing for the past, well, I've been here for just over two and a half years now. It's been great working with the room parents and clearly a wealth of information. The differences are the same, new faces for you and also a different site for some new routines. So let's focus on the differences. Well, here are the new faces. This is actually the current team. So we have Miss Hartunian, Mrs. D. Teresa, and Miss Sullivan, our three class teachers. And they work alongside Miss Julia, Miss Rebecca, and Miss Vassi, our educators in class who also work in Hort. Below them in the box is the primary school management team. So you have myself, You've got Miss Galligan and Mrs. Van Kosky, who are both the assistant principals. We have two in primary, and they both share a class, five GWs, so they're grade five teachers as well. We have Mr. James, who's our Hort leader, and the lady who I cannot do my job without, Mrs. Anchelor Bear, who is the management assistant. And yes, together as a five, we make up the primary school management team. We have our German department, five teachers and one volunteer, all led by Mrs. Frau Giels is what the children call her. Uh, clearly we know it's Frau Giels or Mrs. Giels, but the team is Mrs. Cesar, Mrs. Bell, Frau Giels, Herr Kuchel and Frau Hagemann. Uh, we have Mr. Jonas, who is a GAL volunteer who also works in some, the Hort. We have Miss Carol, the whole school librarian. Um, she does work in primary, but she works for the whole school. And many of you might know Miss Annie or heard of her. You've seen her on some videos. She's on our website as well. But Miss Annie does our music. And as it says at the bottom, GAL is our German as an additional language program. So for those children who are still learning German or in the early stages, in grade one, they would have Frau Giels as their GAL teacher. But on to some more faces. We have Miss Seals, who is the head of student sports services. We have Miss Schumann, our counselor, Miss Arsenic, our learning sport teacher, and Miss uh, Leto, she'd like to be called Miss Leto, um, our learning sport teacher as well. Then there are four PE teachers, uh, all led by Mrs. Bennett, the head of PE. But we've got Mrs. Bennett, Mr. Byrne, Mrs. Allen, and Mr. Reinhardt. Then we have Mrs. Belfield. Yes, Mrs. Belfield, my at-home boss, is in the office next door to me. She is our school nurse. And we have two substitute teachers. So if your child's teacher is absent, these two would be the first people that we'd call upon to step in 
and uh, take the class. So we have Mr. Buckingham and Mrs. Romanyuk. It is a different site, so new routines. Um, like LIK, we open our doors at seven o'clock. From seven till eight, we have indoor horts. We've got a separate hort building that's attached uh, to the main building. And um, from seven till eight, this indoor hort, and then from eight till about 8.27, depending on the weather, the can, children can play outside. But we call it hang and go. So from eight o'clock, the main building doors open. The children are asked to hang their things and go to halt. Then we line up and we have our morning meetings, registration uh, from 8.30 till 9. Then it's two 45 minute periods. Uh, that could just be one lesson or two lessons. Even within those lessons, there'll be different activities. But we have snack break at 10.30, usually runs to about 10.40. And then the children play outside till 11 o'clock. Then we have two more periods. Then we have a lunch break, two more periods. Home time is at three o'clock, but we have optional halt until five. Now, lunch time for grade one is down here for starting at 12.30. We actually start it a little bit earlier for the first few weeks so that the children can get into the routines and have plenty of time to eat. As I've said, there is an increased emphasis on academics. I've mentioned these lessons, but with the class teacher, you'll have English, maths, IPC, containing all of those subjects, including PSHE, physical, social, health, and economic education. They chucked in the economic most recently. But um, yeah, the class teacher basically spends two thirds of the time teaching the children in front of them. And then there are one third of specialist lessons for your child. IPC personal goals. These are a major part in our primary school life and I'm sure your children are already familiar with them. They are these eight, respect, adaptability, morality, resilience, inquiry, cooperation, communication and thoughtfulness. The last one is the one that catches most people out. It uh, tends to be thinking about others. People think it's about that, but it's actually reflecting on what that you've learned and what you'd like to learn. Now, why are they really important? Well, let me share this with you. Our long-term future is to try and skill, uh, equip the children here with the skills necessary for an unknown future. Um, I don't know about you, and I've, I've said this many, many times. When I was around about nine, um, at primary school, I had a topic on bricks. It was it was great fun. Uh, we learned everything about bricks. We drew bricks. Uh, we went to a brick factory. We made some bricks, pictures of bricks, wrote about bricks. What has that done to help me in my job right now? Um, nothing. It was just all knowledge. It was all just knowledge based. And um, our job is to try and equip your children with the skills needed for an unknown future. And that is part of the eight personal goals. Because recruiters often are asked, what are the main things you are looking for in graduates? Now, I know we're talking about children or children, the 21, 21 and above. We're talking about adults, 21, 22, just coming out of university. What is it that recruiters want? And the, the, the list of 10 things rarely changes. Here is what is often said from the Fortune 500. Why am I showing you this? Well, if you look at our IPC personal goals, they match up like this. So we really want to establish these personal goals in the children as soon as possible, as early as possible, in order to prepare them for something, a job, an opportunity, something in say 18 years time. But this is why we do it. I've been using the IPC now since 2007. This is my third school uh, using it. And I've, I've, I'm in touch now with some children that I used to teach when I was a class teacher um, who have gone through the IPC process. Some of, one of them, I, I definitely know she's in Manhattan. She's working for a big company in Manhattan. She got in touch saying, Mr. Belfield, 
Do you remember when you were teaching me in grade four? It was, it was great to get in touch. But this is our job. We want to set your children up for a long-term future. I've talked about the golden rule. It's very simple. There are lots of routines. There's lots of different things that the children need to get used to. But to make it easy, we only have one rule, the golden rule, and that is we treat others the way we would like to be treated. If you think about it, that covers everything. Absolutely everything you can possibly think of. And we always bring it back to this. So make it nice and easy. All of the children in primary, I, I really hope I'm right in saying this, but we're in, in week eight now. All of the children know this rule. I've mentioned Hort, um, the educators all being well, will meet the children in the winter break. Um, the Hort are, team are a massive part of primary. There is a really strong teacher educator relationship here. Um, and as it says at the bottom, they are all state recognized social workers, social pedagogues and etzia. Um, it's a real good combination and the Hort team know, I don't know how they do this, but they know all 286 children by name and they can tell things about them. They're a fabulous team and together as a whole primary school team, it's a great combination to have. Here is the thing about class mixing. You might want to pause this video here, but this is why we do the class mixing and how we go about it. It is a process that takes quite a long time, but have a quick pause of the video and have a quick read. Welcome back. Let's move on. So what do we have in primary um, that's maybe different from local schools? Well, I've got six pages of information here. And if this was live, I would actually skip through this. And I'm actually going to skip through it as this video. I'm sure you can pause at each one. But there is a lot of things that this primary school has to offer. I don't know in comparison to all of the local schools. They are all different from one another. But let's have a look what we've got in primary. And this one. That is a lot, a lot of information. My own children are here. They joined in grades one, two, and three. Now, currently in grades three, four, and five, they love it here. What's easier though is to sum it all up on one page, and it's this. This is what I truly believe this primary school offers. It's children who love school and go on to a successful future. There is a link there to our alumni page on our website. You can see the success stories of children who have gone through the whole journey, gone through grade 12 and have gone on to successful lives. But the children here, yeah, I just want, I really hope that the children here in, it could be five, 10, 20 years time, like that uh, ex-student of mine who contacted me on LinkedIn, who's in Manhattan, look back on their time in prime and go, you know what, that was the best time of my life. So it brings me to the questions. Clearly we can't do an interactive question and answer session here. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. There will be another presentation in around about May. We've got it booked for May. Hopefully we can do it live. But for those of you who are definitely joining our grade one next year, that presentation will give you more and more specific information to prepare you, not only for Ein Shulong, everybody loves Ein Shulong, 
not only to prepare you for Einschulen, but to prepare you for life in primary. But feel free to email me. I will do my best to respond to you as quickly as possible. The final thought, it's been 20 minutes is what my timer is saying here. So thank you for staying with me so far. This is the final thought. These are just a few images of what this whole school has to offer. Top left, we have the back to school party. We didn't have one this year, but had them in the past. We have exciting interactive lessons. There's Miss Annie with members of the choir and children who wanted to sing. We have the IT labs. And of course, in the bottom right hand corner, we've got our grade 12 graduates. It's a great place. I know I work here, I know I'm the principal, but I truly believe in this school. The colleagues that I work with, the parents and families that I get to see every day, and most importantly, the students, they are the ones who make all of us wake up in the morning and say, I'm gonna be at primary today. So I hope you will join us on this journey. Thank you very much for listening and have a pleasant morning, afternoon or evening. I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.